Hello, my peeps. <laughs> I'm back with my note card holder. This is Tracy, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. And uh, we were talking about this earlier in the week. Um, my computer is appearing to cooperate tonight, so I'm going to give this my best shot. So this was the note card holder I was talking about, and I think I just showed you a picture of the Christmas one, which I don't know what I did with. So I'm going to use this one as an example, because when I make it, you'll be able to see exactly this um, DSP pattern, so you can hopefully follow along. Um, these things are, are pretty handy, and I'll show you a couple different things you can do too. So when you open it up, note cards. Now these note cards got to be a little more elaborate. <laughs> I can't help myself. I like making note cards and they're smaller, um, a little bit smaller surface and yet they're just so much fun to see how much you can cram in there. So I did make, I made them all birthday because I thought this would be nice. Like you could give this to somebody who could then have four birthday cards to hand out. Uh, this one was meant to be a little more, oops, not that one. I started trying to make one a little more masculine one. Did I end up doing it or did I change it? No, I changed it. Um, but these tulips are just so cute. So it does hold, each side of them has two new, two note cards and two envelopes. The way this folds, you can also put your envelopes in here. Um, should you feel like it, it just, cause then it, it almost looks purposeful to have like the space here. And there's one on the other side too, where you could put in two. Um, I don't know, I guess if you made them like perfectly flat, I've seen some awesome note cards that are simply stamped on. Um, or just, I started out with just the DSP and then it was going to be a stamp, but like I said, I got, I got carried away. Um, cause these are just so awesome. Uh, but yeah, you could, you could, maybe you could fit six in, but in general, you don't want it super, super tight. So I'm saying four. So this is, there's no glue. There's no anything. This is one piece of 12 by 12, uh, designer paper that folds up and then a little decoration on the front, little string to tie or ribbon to tie it shut. Um, I'm going to show you how quickly this comes together, but I will show you a couple other options you have. Um, so this was the Christmas one that I made. Uh, I think this was last year actually at the Christmas sale. Now you don't have to, um, and it's just an, a purely aesthetic thing, but in this one, I put a strip of tear and tape along here on either side. So it's, it's just closed tighter. And so it just, I don't know, it looks a little cleaner. Um, like I said, you can make fairly simple cards. Um, these ones are most, oops, that's the envelope. That's a super simple card. <laughs> uh, these ones are mostly just a little strip of paper cause it was cute. Um, and yeah, a little bit of stamping, a sentiment and away you go. So there's that option for Christmas. And then using the exact same container. And again, I made this one at, at a workshop for Christmas as well. Now this one, if you look at, you'll see it's a little, it's a little bumpy. It's not quite as smooth, but that's because I crammed a bunch of stuff in, but it still works. So this one is the exact same layout. I, this time instead, and it's, I didn't put enough on because it's starting to pull apart. It's partially pulling apart just because of how much I put in it as well. But, um, I stuck a piece of ribbon in each of these. So instead of going around the envelope, it's just coming out of the ends. And it, it was again, just a different look. Um, you, this is also a good solution if you forget. So when you want that, you don't want this ribbon to pull out. So what I've actually done is the ribbon, I put the ribbon in like this and put a piece of tear and tape across, and then I folded it back on itself to pull out. So when you pull on this, you've actually got a loop. So you're like pulling against the loop. So it's not just going to pull out even with adhesive over top of it. If you pull hard enough or tie hard enough, you probably could pull it out if it's just got a straight shot. So by putting that little bit of a bend, it holds it. And then you just, yeah, tear and tape it shut. And in this case, you'll notice when we fold, th these normally lay flat. But in this case, I just sort of pried up the fold a little bit, added in some cookies and a candy cane. Um, on this one, instead of putting in note cards, I put, oops, I'm off the screen. Instead of note cards, I put in hot chocolate. And then just stuck with a couple glue dots in the middle. And this is where the spine is anyway, and it just happens to fit perfectly, is um, a little tube full of marshmallows. So there was a little snack. Now you could put, you know, a thing of chicken soup and a little thing of, you know, hauls and a Kleenex and um, yeah, you could probably get a bunch of stuff in there. Super cute though, right? So nice little gift idea. I like them. And uh, it just, again, ties up like the other one does. And there you go. 
And even this, stuffed with all of this stuff, the only adhesives on it are like, you know, the dimensionals holding this on and the adhesive I used here. I still did not glue anything down in here. But, so it's a pretty versatile little project if you ask me. So we're just going to make the nice simple one right now. I'm just going to show you how to make it. Again, we're using this DSP. So imagine that this is what you want the, it to look like, right? You want you want to see the, the one you can see the most of is the tulips and then it folds over. I wish this was a little bit brighter on the backside, um, but it is what it is. Um, and then this kind of, because you know why? Because it looks like a stormy sky and I was kind of going for the bright tulips. But anyway, so keep that in mind that that's what we're doing. So when we start, we're going to take our piece of DSP. Now, whichever DSP you're using, it's not going to be perfect because on the inside, it's actually going to be upside down. But when you're looking at it like this, you should be looking or sorry, if this is the end result you want, this is what you should be looking at. The piece of paper that you want to be on the outside of the cover should be facing you and it should be right side up for you. So you should be looking at it as if you were reading a book, right? Everything lined up right side. And this way you'll end up with, when you do all your folding, you'll end up with it in the right order. Now I'm just going to scooch a little to get out where I need to go. Okay, so it's this is a full size, full 12 by 12 piece of paper. Um, I, you could make a smaller version of this. Actually, by 6 by 6, how big would it be? It would be a quarter of the size, right? Oh my goodness, it'd be cute. But it would only fit, um, like, you know, these little York back room. It'd be, like, big enough to fit that, I think, if you made it much smaller. Um, I, if you did it with cardstock... You'd have to square up the cardstock so it'd be 11 or 8.5 by 8.5. Mm. It would. You could probably use it still as a pretty cute um, treat holder, but you certainly wouldn't be able to fit note cards in it. So anyways, yeah, you pretty much need to start with a piece of 12 by 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to score it, and I'm scoring it the same way. And you guys know I got my little weird thing about, you know, never having enough room on my desk and stretching out my, my trimmer arm. Um, this is one of those ones where you make sure you pay attention, use the trimmer blade, not the cutting blade. Uh, and if you really want, and actually I'm going to do it just to show you, um, the best way to guarantee that you do not use the wrong blade. So here's my trimmer blade. So I'm just going to pop it over to where the little thing is and I'm just going to pop it right out and I'm just going to put it on the desk beside me. Now I don't have to worry because when you all of a sudden cut in your 12 piece or your piece of DSP, especially if it's the last one you have of the pattern you want, you're not happy. Okay, so I did my first one was at one and seven eighths, and then my next one is at five and three quarters. Okay, so I'm gonna trim. And because it's DSP, I'm just giving it a couple like run through because it's really hard to see. Now, on the instructions, you'll see that you also have to go six and a quarter and 10 and an eighth. Now that stretches things out Right, which I don't like to do. So basically, though, we are making this even. So if you flip your paper around, like do a 180 on it, so you still have the side you want up, and just go and do those same measurements over again, you'll get the you'll get the same answer. But when you see that I have different numbers on there, that's because it's designed for you know normal people who would just pull the arm of the trimmer out and go keep going. I never claim to be normal. I have no goals to be normal. You know. None of that stuff. Okay, now pull it back. So now you can see we've got, this is the flap that folds over. We've got our little spine in the middle. You can't quite see it because like I said, DSP is brutal to try to see. The spine in the middle and then another little edge on the side. Okay, so holding it like this. Now we're just going to turn it one 90 degree turn. And we're just going to put two score marks in it. Um, this is going to give us, we'll open this one back up. This is going to give us these pieces. Sorry, <laughs> these pieces. So this is the smaller one on top and the bigger ones on the bottom. If for some reason you needed the smaller one to be on the bottom and the bigger one to be on the top, turn your paper again, like so that, so instead of being this way, it was this way. But I, I would think you want the bigger one, the bigger piece on the bottom um, to hold it better, but like I said, for some reason. So this one, we are just going to go two and a half. And then again, we want eight and a quarter. 
So eight and a quarter means three and three quarters from the bottom. So I've just flipped my paper over, but let's pretend I did add eight and a quarter. <laughs> okay, we're done. We're done with the scoring. Now, we want to keep this. Um, and you'll notice I have, I, I don't know if I mentioned that. I, I said in the instructions. Um, because this one can be confusing, I did. Actually, I wonder if I did it the other way. If it would work better. You know what I mean? I'm going to do it just, just, just for, I was going to swear on nothing. Just for somethings and giggles, I'm going to do it this way and see what, and so you can see the opposite way it's going to look. Um, so when you, when you look at the instructions, you will notice there's a, D, uh, a DSP, a PDF for this. Um, I keep in the, in the PDF, I kept saying, this is the side, this is what you're looking at because it matters how it comes out. I'm thinking that, because then I'll have, no, you know what, I'm going to stick with my original plan. I think, somehow I thought it might work, but in the end, I, I think it'll be too dark. Okay, so this is what we want, right? So we're looking, we're still looking at the paper the way we want it. Now we need to fold these four corners in. I found the easiest way to do that is to just kind of go by feel, find your DSP, and because you've scored it, I'm trying to see if I can get this to show on the camera, because you've scored it, if you go like this and just give it a little bit, it's naturally going to find that score line, right? So you don't have to fold it or burnish it or anything. Just kind of go roughly where the score line is and just kind of encourage it to follow the score line. We just need to know where this mark is. So we're just doing that on all four of our, all four of our um, score lines so that we can, there we go, so that we can find our place. Okay. So now, and it bends up a little bit so I can... Like when, when it's laying flat, you can't quite see that. Here, can you see it this way? Right, so you can kind of see where you're going. Because again, you can't see score lines on here. But what we're going to do is from this corner, and we have our friendly trusty ruler again. Um, from this corner, I want to follow this score line. Right? And I want to go, I'm going to use this just so you can see where the score line is. I want to take this point, this corner point that I just did, I want to take this point and put it down. Now, what it says in the instructions, and what you need to remember, is these points are pointing at the paper that's on the outside. So if at this point you've got it backwards, flip it over before you get too far, but this is pointing at the outside of the cover. So we're going to do that with all four of them. And I'm just using a ruler because it, it's uh, if, I, if I go where the score line is and I put the ruler over top of it, and I can kind of, I can kind of feel where the rest of the score line is. But if I put the, I put it there, when I go to fold, I'm, I'm keeping my fold at that corner. It doesn't even matter where the rest of it goes. I just need to make sure that this ruler here is holding my fold at that point. And I'm folding it over. And we're doing the same thing over here. See, I have too much stuff on my desk. A 12 by 12 piece of paper is, is a challenge on my desk. Okay, oops. Now, in this case, I guess I scored a little too hard there because um, I ripped it a bit. You're not going to notice it, but just just um, kind of finesse it so you fold back so you get as, as much. I, I just fold it like I ripped it down a little bit, so we'll just fold it back there. And then our last one. Okay, so now I have them pointing at the cover of the book. Now I'm going to take the the full fold line that was there. Oops, sorry, just temporarily lost my thing, and I'm going to burnish it. And you can burnish these sides too now that you're down here, just to get a nice flat fold on everything. We're going to go do the other one on the other side. All right. So now we have. So this is still our front cover. We've got our corners folded in, and we've now folded on the first score line. Now, we're going to flip the paper over. Oops, I'm keeping those little pieces underneath. Now we're going to use the two fold lines we made, the horizontal ones. See, stormy sky. So this is our first one, which is here at the bottom, which is the three and three and three quarters up from the bottom, I think is what it was. Get that a nice little score. We're going to go find our our one from the top, go down there, do that, and then 
I'm going to find our middle ones. And you'll see that the middle ones, this is just like the half inch spine. That gives it the nice fold. If you if you just had like one center line, then it would still fold, but it would fold more like this. By putting it kind of squared off, it give, just gives a nicer edge, right? So there's our thing. So we've we folded the middle, which I forgot to do first, and this. Now this is as simple as this. These things almost overlap, or or just barely overlap, but they do overlap. So all we're going to do is tuck, and we're going to go on this side. And we're going to tuck and we're going to make sure that our when we fold it in half our DSP for some reason the DSP sometimes wants to pop out we don't want to do that ta-da that's how simple this thing is it is phenomenal um so yeah the probably the hardest part of doing this is picking which DSP you want to use now we have the like I said the sides kind of poke open a little bit so if you wanted to close those little tear and tape works, little um, liquid glue works. You notice on here, this is where our fold was, right? So when I made the treat holder, all I did was turn it upside down and use this as a little pocket. And on the one that I used, it didn't really matter. Um, when I did that, the, the one I used, the DSP I used, it didn't really matter because it was non-directional. So if you are using a treat holder, Keep in mind that it has to be non-directional. Now this one, by flipping it upside down, what I did was made the inside go the right way, right? But if you look at the outside, all the flowers are upside down because it's, it's actually designed to go this way where the flowers are, are on the right side, <clears throat> excuse me, on the outside, but inside they're upside down because inside you don't normally see it. So if you do want to be able to flip it over and use these pouches as little treat holders, gift card holders, whatever, use non-directional paper. Okay, um, and then yeah, making your note cards, that's the easy part. Whip up some note cards, which I've said this, I know I've said this before, I'm like a broken record, but note cards are so handy. Uh, 20 to a pack, pre-cut, pre-scored, come with envelopes, right? So pop out four of those, four cards, or four envelopes, four cards, and here you go. Now, this one, I tied the ribbon around the whole outside, right? So all I did was put a little piece of tear and tape here, a little piece of tear and tape here, wrapped the ribbon around, and that was what kind of held it so it wasn't constantly falling off, and then just decorated up the front. This one, I put the ribbon, like I said, in between here, and then because I have so much stuff in here, I'm just, I'm, I didn't put enough tear and tape in there, so I'm kind of challenging it, but I did nonetheless put it in so it's there, and it's, and it, it's, it uses a little bit less ribbon, but it also just keeps a cleaner front. And then this one was the same as the first one. I just wrapped the ribbon around. Now this one, because the ribbon's so small, I couldn't really tear and tape it, but I got a big chunk of tear and tape holding the ribbon underneath this tree, and I got a big chunk of tear and tape holding it underneath this um, circle die cut. So there you go. Oops, let's just move that out of the way. We've got treat holders, and we've got note card holders all bundled up in a handy dandy little thing so i would love to see you guys try this um it is a fun little project like i said i think they make great gifts um, you could hand it to somebody just like this as a gift um, if you really wanted to you could put it in some kind of a cellophane bag with a little tag on it that said you know happy mother's day happy birthday thanks for all your help um i think there's lots of things you could do with this but it's a fun easy project it's a great way to hang out hand out note cards or treats uh, and it's a simple simple way to use up your DSP so I hope you enjoyed that project I will uh, I will post the PDF in the link um, I'm having trouble figuring out how to do it in my in my blog for my the other PDF I had promised you so that's why it's not out yet I'm working on it but uh, I will post this if I can into the link otherwise I will find a way to to um, link to where the PDF is stored so you guys can have the PDF instructions on this uh, thanks for joining me. I'm sorry I'm late on this. It was supposed to be yesterday and now it's today, but um, I still hope you enjoy the project and I hope you try it. And if you do, feel free to come back into the Facebook post or send me your pictures and I'll post them for you so we can all see your projects and we can all get ideas from each other. Thanks everyone. Have a great night.